Hello and good day. My name is John Martin Owen B. Maturan, the group leader of this thesis group, and together with my co-researchers, we are going to present our Polish Chapter 1 in accordance with the panelists' suggestions, recommendations, and comments together with the guidance of our research advisor. Mastering English means being proficient in the four language skills, namely listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And out of all the four macro skills, speaking is usually gets the first priority in English teaching. In line with this, our research team chose to conduct the study entitled Factors Affecting the Speaking Proficiency in English of Teacher Education Freshmen of Bacolod City College. To give the background of our study, Ms. Isabel Sabordo will take over. The basic foundation of our research is its background of the study, and at this point, I am going to present our introduction in accordance with the panelists' suggestions and comments. And this is Isabel S. Bordeaux, the first presenter. According to panelists' suggestions, the researchers must include their experiences regarding with the research topics since they are also an English language learners. The corrected point stated that the researchers as an English language learners observed that the speaking English language remains challenging task since it was driven with a different factors. The reasons why the students are having problems in speaking relies on various personal perspectives on how they perceive English as a language. The researchers also link first-hand experiences to further support the existing problem. The researchers observe that factors such as linguistics, problems that entails poor grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation hinders the English language learners to speak proficiently. Another factor that becomes a barrier for the students to be good English speaker is the psychological problems that often interfere with emotional and physical health, relationships, work productivity, or life adjustments such as nervousness, lack of self-confidence, and afraid to speak. Speaking does not mean merely uttering words through the mouth. It means conveying the message through words of mouth. The environment of the learners also impedes to the exposure of the English language that affects the acquisition of oral proficiency. Individuals learn to speak their mother tongue just by listening and repeating. In a similar manner, foreign language is learned by imitation and reproduction. Thus, learning to speak English language demands a lot of practice and attention for their productive skills specifically speaking to develop. Good day everyone, this is Ray P. Perez and I am one of the members of the research group entitled Factors Affecting the Speaking Proficiency in English of Teacher Education Freshmen of Bacolod City College. And now, we are down to the statement of the problem as well as the hypothesis according to panelists' suggestions. So first, the statement of the problem. And this study aims to determine the factors affecting the speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshmen of Bacolod City College. Moreover, the salient findings of this study will serve as the basis to improve the speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshmen students. So the researcher seeks to answer the following questions. Question 1. What is the profile of the respondents when grouped according to age, sex, and the course major, high school graduated whether it is rural or urban, and when taken as a whole? Question number two. What is the level of speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshmen of Bacolod City College when grouped according to age, sex, and the course major, High school graduated whether it is rural or urban, and when taken as a whole. Question number three. Is there a significant difference between 
the factors affecting the speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshmen of Bacal City College to and grouped according to age, sex, and to that course major, high school graduated whether it is rural or urban, and when taken as a whole. So the second one is the hypothesis. And to guide the researcher, the research hypothesis was developed. And it says, there is no significant difference between the factors affecting the speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshmen of Bacolod City College when grouped according to age, sex, and tended course major, high school graduated whether it is rural or urban, and when taken as a whole. Thank you. So hi, for the continuation, this is Michaela Dominic A. Alera, and I will be presenting the scope and limitation. So, scope and limitations of the study. So, the scope and limitation contains the things that will be covered by the study and to where and what I will be focusing on. So, similarly, the things that is not going to be covered. For the scope and limitations of the study, there are some things that was corrected or was suggested to eliminate and include. The first one is the sentence of the verb that we used. So, specifically, the linking verb. So, it was corrected by Mr. Makilan. And the sentence was, The research respondents were the 120 freshman teacher education students. And the where in the sentence was replaced by will be. So, it's the research respondents will be the 120 freshman teacher education students. The second one was a reminder that um, we should always double check the information that we input into our study. So Mr. McLean saw that it should be six distinct sections in which those are the sections A, B, C, D, E, and F. The third one is for us to avoid redundancy. Redundant words or phrases do not contribute to the meaning, rather removing them improves readability. So, it should be avoided during structuring a sentence. All in all, those are the corrected, reminded, and suggested things that the panelists gave unto us during the pre-oral defense in the section of scope and limitations. And here is the revised scope and limitations of our study. So, employing the descriptive research design, this study mainly focused on determining the factors affecting the speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshmen in Bacolod City College. So, it's for the academic year 2021 to 2022. So, also the research respondents will be the 120 freshman teacher education students coming from different six distinct sections, such as A, B, C, D, E, and F. The study will not include the other problems faced by the students, but will only focus on the possible internal and external factors that hinders students to speak English language proficiently. So the next sections or the next part of our study will be discussed or presented by my other group mates. Thank you. Hello, it's me again, John Martin Owen B. Maturan, to talk a little bit about our definition of terms. For the revision of our definition of terms, the panelists noted that our conceptual definitions should not come from dictionaries, like these words here. As you can see, we took the definition for affective and cognitive from Merriam-Webster Dictionary, as well as the definition for psychological. And we took the definition for students from Oxford Dictionary. And for the revised definitions, we changed it to this. The other presenters already presented a basic foundation of our research study. But at this juncture, I am going to present how this proposed research study is related to prior research to further support our chosen research problem being investigated. This is Arika Cresta and I am going to introduce both foreign and local conceptual literature based on the suggestions, advices, and comments from the board of panelists' last pre-oral defense. 
The board of panelists commented that the presented conceptual literature, both foreign and local, only needs a little revision and must provide additional information to support the existing problem. In relation to our study that focuses on speaking skills, Koro de Yoglu 2011 suggests speaking is considered fundamental in language learners' performance both individually and socially since it is a tool for human communication to interact daily. On the other hand, speaking proficiency was enlightened by Sagalowitz 2010 that defines speaking proficiency as the ability to speak communicatively, fluently, and accurately. Pollard 2008 also stated that in the process of teaching and learning, if teachers want to check students' proficiency, teachers allow students to express themselves freely without interruption. However, students face different factors that affect their speaking proficiency in English as indicated in several pieces of literature. To one in May 2015 found that the bad performance of students in speaking was affected by some factors such as lack of student motivation, the use of mother tongue in the learning process, lack of vocabulary, and participation during teaching activities. Another point from Nation in Newton 2009 saw that students' speaking presentation is impacted mostly by psychological problems, for example, fear of committing mistakes, anxiety, the pressure of peers, and lack of confidence. Therefore, Cosma 2015 said that teaching English, especially speaking skill, is one of the most challenging. Moving forward with the local literature, the Philippines fall from 14th place in 2018 to 20th place in 2019. English Proficiency Index is a cause for worry for the country's education. EPI measures the average level of English language skills based on the results of an online standard English test. Nevertheless, English is treated as a second language in the country. Filipinos widely use English in their daily communication and transaction. In schools, from primary education to college, the English language is being taught, and almost everywhere in the country, the English language can be heard. Therefore, English language was known by almost all types of people regardless of race and educational attainment, but not everybody can speak it proficiently. This is Keishul El Alcantara. We are now down to the review of related literature where I will be introducing both local and foreign literature that will serve as a foundation of knowledge on our current research study. Based on the suggestions, advices, and comments from Board of Panelists last free oral defense, for the review of related literature, the Board of Panelists only commented that the researchers should lessen the studies presented. Several researchers have studied the factors that affect the speaking proficiency of mostly students whose English is not their first language. Each study had one research objective in common, and that is to find out what causes students to be or to not be proficient when speaking in English. They have looked into several factors, namely affective factors like shyness, behavior, and attitudes of students, cognitive factors like their level of proficiency on fluency, vocabulary and grammar, psychological factors like anxiety and fear of making mistakes, learning motivations, learning opportunities, teaching approaches or strategies, and amount of exposure to English as a language. Upon observing the studies, some factors are connected and related to another factor that affects the speaking proficiency of students. The studies have tested learners with different levels of proficiency in speaking. Furthermore, the studies have used several methods to test the speaking proficiency of students and methods to test the impact of each factor on the students. There are studies that have tested their proposed approaches that may or may not help with increasing the level of speaking proficiency of students. Their studies have shown results that confirm that these factors have significant relationships or associations and affect or have a great impact on the speaking proficiency of students. There are also studies that prove that there is a weak or no significant relationship between the speaking proficiency of a student and the cognitive factor. These studies have shown results and suggested interventions 
recommendations and solutions to help students that struggle to speak in English proficiently. We are now down to the conceptual framework of the study where I, Cherry Nicole Burden, is about to present the corrected schematic diagram advised by our porn panelists to show the relationships between our variables, research problems, as well as our designated program. In this study, the freshman teacher education students of Bacal City College will serve as the respondents. Furthermore, variables such as Internal and external factors are determined through questionnaires gathered and crafted by the researchers. The salient findings led to understanding how they can affect the speaking proficiency in English of Teacher Education Department and led to a program called Transitional or Early Exit Program where the goal is to have students learning entirely in English as quickly as possible. This instruction is a blend. It starts off by first helping the students understand concepts and fluency by teaching in their native language. Then, once concepts are mastered, teachers will switch to instruction in English only. Hello, I'm Christine Iwukia, and I present to you the theoretical framework of the study. First and foremost, there were no revisions needed in this part, but allow me to explain the theories that were included in our study. This study is supported by four theories, namely, first, the basic interpersonal communicative skills, second, cognitive academic language proficiency, third, communicative competence, and lastly, the Welt psycholinguistic model. This will help to address the factors that may affect the speaking proficiency of students, both external and internal. Comments differentiate two types of language proficiencies that the learner develops. First is the basic interpersonal communicative skills. Second, cognitive academic language proficiencies. Let us discuss first what is basic interpersonal communicative skills. It is defined as the level of language used in everyday social situation, often said to be the everyday language within educational context. On the other hand, the COP or cognitive academic language proficiencies refers to the student's academic learning in the various subject areas. This explains the level of language learning is essential for students to succeed in school. It includes the oral and written production skills of speaking and writing, and the oral and writing comprehension skills of listening and reading in content areas. Next theory we have in line is the communicative competence. The applied linguist Canil and Swain publish an influential article in which they argued that the ability to communicate required four different sub-competencies: grammatical, social linguistic, discourse and strategic. Communicators must have the ability to repair the inevitable miscommunications that frequently arise during interaction. Last on our list is Lavelle's psycholinguistic model. It is one of the most influential psycholinguistic models of oral production that comes from Lavelle. Lavelle's psycholinguistic model focuses on speech production. That is, the cognitive steps required to produce a spoken utterance, from intention to articulation. The theories mentioned gave the researchers a research-based understanding and provide the information needed to assess the factors affecting the speaking proficiency in English freshman students of teacher education of the College City College. That's all. Thank you. Let's move on in the chapter 2 under the methodology which the panelists have been stated in your recommendations or suggestions in the sport, which is the research design. So this study employed a quantitative descriptive research design and according to Makov's 2020, descriptive research aims to accurately and systematically describe a population, situation, or phenomenon. It can answer with when, what, where, 
and how questions but not why questions. Descriptive research design can use a wide variety of research methods to investigate one or more variables. Descriptive research attempts to find general attributes of the presently existing situation or phenomenon, even the characteristics and components of a given population. In this sense, descriptive research was deemed appropriate to determine the factors affecting the speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshman students enrolled in Bacolod City College academic institution for school year 2021 to 2022 in terms of two categories namely internal and external factors this is still Bergen Charity Cole and we are now on the respondents of the study where there is no further revisions advised by our panel list the study respondents were the 120 freshman teacher education students under sections A, B, C, D, E, and F enrolled in Bacolod City College academic year 2021-2022. Using Yamini's formula with a margin error of 5%, a sample size of 120 was obtained out of total population of 197 freshman teacher education students. In selecting the respondents, stratified random sampling was utilized. Tahardos, 2016, described stratified random sampling as a type of probability, sampling where the population is divided into strata, or we call it subgroups, and a random sample is taken from each subgroup. The researchers chose this sampling technique to ensure that each stratum, in the case of this study, the respondents' sex and section are adequately represented. We are now down to our sampling design. And what technique did the researchers use to distinguish the sample size and the respondents? The researchers used non-proportional stratified sampling technique. There are two types of stratified sampling technique. First is the proportional, where the percentage of desired sample is multiplied to each population of its strata, while the non-proportional, or also known as disproportionate stratified sampling, is when the sample is not proportionate to its strata. The researchers use this considering the variable of the study and to meet the objective of this study as well. Example is when the problem considering sex as variable, it will be compared if one section has only 5 male and 15 female, and when 50% of these will be respondents of the study, it will be 3 male and 7 female using the proportionate. In our study, we took all the male and what's left of our sample size, we chose the females as respondents of the study to meet the objective of the study. Hey, it's me again, John Martin Owen B. Maturan to talk about our data collection instrument. Now, there are no revisions regarding our data collection, but I'm going to show you our data collection instrument anyway. The researchers established a researcher-made questionnaire duly subjected for validation and reliability to evaluate the number of respondents. The respondents in the study were given a researcher-made questionnaire composed of two parts. Part 1, the demographic profile of the respondents specifically aim to gather information of the respondent's age, sex, and intended course. Part 2, the survey questionnaire composed of 20 questions to determine the factors affecting the speaking proficiency in English of teacher education freshmen in terms of the following categories, internal and external factors. The researchers will make sure to receive the responses from the respondents through Google Forms due to the current situation under the pandemic. This is me again, Irika Crestes Apenza, to present with you the validity of the data collection instrument. The panelist commends the researchers for using the accurate criteria for validation of the research instrument.
According to Frankel and Wall in 2012, validity refers to the appropriateness, meaningfulness, and usefulness of the inferences made by the researcher. In order to maintain an exact and accurate questionnaire, the researchers consulted three experts in the field of English with a doctorate and master's degree of education from Teacher Education Department of Bacolod City College. To rate and check the format and content of the questionnaire based on the criteria of Carter v. Good and Douglas B. Skates. In determining the overall status of every juror evaluation for the validity of the researcher's survey questionnaire. The researchers obtained a mean of 4.67, which indicates that the researcher's questionnaire is very good and this means that the instrument used by the researchers is valid.